You have any ideas of how to start <laughs> this? <laughs> um, no. We've been doing this for what two years? Still have not figured it out. Uh, we've been doing this for not even one year. This I see. Well, that. total podcasting. Yeah. We've never known how to start these. Yeah. That's like the one thing. I feel like we've gotten better at everything else except starting podcasts. Starting and ending. I don't know. I feel like we're Just doing a lot better at ending. Yeah, I guess ending is a little better. Yeah. How, how do other people start it? They say, I think they just welcome talking. to my show. My name is da 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 da, and my co-host is blah blah blah, and we are right. going to talk about That's our intro right there. Blahs. Oh, super boring. Although, well, <laughs> so, it's not like that's <laughs> super exciting, but, uh. All right. Well, uh, we are talking about, so today we're going to talk about the defenders. Taylor has finally watched it and it is his yeah. favorite show of all time. If by favorite, you mean the, like the biggest waste of my time, then I loved it so much. It was my favorite. <laughs> so have you seen all the other shows now other than the Punisher? You're cause all, yeah, you're halfway through the Punisher. We just finished episode seven today. Um, um, but yes, have seen all the other ones. What is your ranking of the other seasons? Um, okay, so I think Daredevil season two is my favorite. Really, that's interesting. And but that's because of the Punisher. I've yeah. always loved the Punisher for the longest time. So the fact that he's in, I just like that he was in it. Um, but Daredevil season one. Is also great. Yeah. Uh, Daredevil as a whole is, is miles ahead of the other shows. Yes. Um, after that, I would say uh, it's a toss up for me between Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. I think probably Jessica Jones has the edge. Yeah. Um, cause I think we've talked a little bit about it. I, I like the, the purple man. Yeah. So I thought that was great. I don't necessarily care for Jessica Jones. And then Luke Cage was uh, kind of boring, and Iron Fist was really, really bad. Yeah. And then Defenders, to be honest, I I felt like the Defenders was a little bit better than Iron Fist, mm. and that's because I didn't have to see Iron Fist in every scene. <laughs> and that's really it. Yeah. I hated the villains. I hated the story. I hated the. I hated the dynamic between the four characters. I didn't feel like there was any actual good dynamic. Like they There's, just the the one scene that was cool was when Iron Fist hid behind Luke Cage to not get shot in the boardroom, and then yeah, that that, I, okay. that fight. Yeah, when he yeah, I like that when he came in. Yeah, and then that fight um, was kind of cool, but that was like the only notable thing out of all eight episodes. That I remember like, oh, that was cool. Everything else was just awful. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything that I really liked. Um, even, I mean, even Daredevil was boring. Yeah. Uh, I like, um, what's the girl's name from Daredevil? Uh, Karen? Karen, mm-hmm. I think she has a good like side storyline really throughout Daredevil and the Defenders. Yeah, I, I I like hers. I she is so annoying. Oh really? Yeah. I I don't have any problems with her. Um, I have all the problems with her. As for the rest of the people, awful. Like Rosario Dawson, I liked her in Daredevil. I liked her in all the other ones. I didn't like her in this. I thought she was kind of annoying. I don't, I, oh, I just don't like any of these people. Oh my gosh, I don't like them. <laughs> they have no chemistry. That's what I'm looking for. There's like no chemistry whatsoever. Yeah. Well, and I, like, uh, it, I couldn't believe, I couldn't get into the story. Like, I couldn't believe that they were, that they had ever worked together. Yeah. Do you think it would have been better if 
So you, they've had what, five seasons before the Defenders, right? Yeah, Daredevil 1, Jessica Jones, Daredevil 2, Luke Cage, and Iron, Iron Fist. Fist. So yeah, five. Yep. So if they would have, instead of doing the Defenders as an entire season, put one episode of the Defenders in between the seasons, like, so you have Daredevil season one and then a bonus episode of the Defenders episode one, where Daredevil meets Jessica Jones and starts building a relationship, and then Jessica Jones, start, like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that would have been better, but I think it could have even been better if 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 Iron Fist and the Defenders were one thing. Like, I didn't need a full season of Iron Fist; it was so boring. Yeah, like like that could have been the intro to the Defenders, kind of like how. Captain America Civil War is it's got like everybody in it you know it's not focused on Captain it could have somewhere along those lines I just Iron Fist is not compelling enough to hold its own season no well and, and if they was... have another season which I don't know if they've even announced that or not I know they have for the other shows mm-hmm. I don't even know if I'll watch it like Jessica Jones season two Luke Cage season two would have to be like really good and I'd have to really see like uh, a good story progression for me to even bother with Iron Fist. Yeah. Well, the it was just so rushed. It like the the guy. Are you there? I feel like I lost you. Yeah. Okay. Nope, I'm here. The sound dropped out. Um, the guy, I think his name is Finn Jones. Yeah. Is not a martial artist. No. And, and they yeah. would. They would give him, you know, a few minutes right before filming a scene to go over the choreography. Like, they just set him up to fail pretty much from the beginning. Who is, do you think that's the director's choice? Like, who thought that was a good idea? Or did they try training him and he just like was not getting it and forgetting everything? And they're like, you know what? We'll just do it five minutes ahead of time. Their way, that way he can't even forget it. Well, I, they originally had a different person. Who's gonna be Iron Fist? Like a oh oh really? Yeah, and I believe it was the drunk guy that he fought in the alleyway. Is uh I don't recall that person. Is he <clears throat> someone of note? Just the, the drunk guy that he fought in the alleyway. I, that was that was about it. I don't think he has any other scenes or anything. I think they just gave him like a no no. I mean, is he a notable person that anyone would recognize? Oh, the actual actor. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm not sure. I think it was... Well, uh, none of it matters. He would have been better. <laughs> well, so m- one of my biggest frustrations with this is the opening scene, the first five minutes. It's oh, in- the clink, clink, clink? <laughs> it's impossible to tell what's going on. And I was telling you about that, how you can't see it. Did you? What did you think of that? Did you notice that? Oh, immediately, but it's probably because you said something, but yeah. it was, um, it was to me, this is what I'll compare it to the equivalent of like, it's the sound version of when you're driving, right? And uh-huh. let's say you're driving down a road that's like lined with trees and you got the sun setting on the other side of these trees and the sun keeps like flashing in between the trees as you're driving Yeah, and you like can't. There's like not enough shade. There's, it's just like flash, flash, flash. And it's like irritating to my eyes. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else in the world even has that problem. I have this problem and that's what it felt like to me. It was like frustrating. I'm pretty and sure like everyone irritating. in the world has that problem. What are you talking about? Okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> Did you really not think anyone else had that problem? I don't know. I've never heard anyone say anything about it. <laughs> Cause everyone, everyone experience, you know, like if you have a flashlight and I shine it on and off in your eyes, it'll get frustrating. Uh, this is worse. Cause I'm also trying to drive, <laughs> but I'm saying just light changing in your eye is going to affect you. Fine. So that's, uh, it, it's the sound equivalent of that. Yeah. It's really bad. It, you can't. Did you know it was Iron Fist when you started watching it? Because um, I had no, no idea who was fighting who. I didn't know who was the good guy, who was the bad guy, why. I just assumed was it was fighting. someone fighting the hand because yeah. they used the swords. Mm-hmm. 
Which, okay, I, I, I don't get why more people aren't using guns against these people. Uh, swords are good, but guns are better. Yeah. Yeah, if the Punisher would have gone against the hand, he would have taken them all the out. The Punisher would wipe out the hand in like a minute. <laughs> yeah, that whole like not breathing or like stopping their heartbeat so Daredevil can't hear them would, yeah. wouldn't work against the Punisher. He but like, I still see you, so I'm going to shoot you. Um, But yeah, no, the Defenders is really bad. Uh, what we're going to talk about today, what this episode's going to be about, is actually Punisher, the movie from 99. Is it that old? 99? I think it was 99, wasn't it? No, it's like 2003, 2002. Let's see. I'm going to say 2003. 2004. You're wrong, sir. Four. Okay. Well, I was close. Um... Yeah, because I remember when we went to see this in theater. Do you remember that? Yeah, my dad took us. So I thought see, that was so crazy. Yeah. For for a whole slew of reasons. First, I don't think that your dad has ever taken us to a movie, right? I think that was probably the first and last time. <laughs> probably. I don't now I don't remember him ever taking us. He's taken me to the movies a few well, times. Well, of course. Yeah, I don't, th- I don't remember. And, but okay, so the crazy, I remember it being his idea, yeah. right? Like we didn't, it's not like we were like begging to go to the movies. I, I wanted to see it because I, you know, I like the Punisher, but I knew, I knew that it was going to be dark and it was going to be violent. Yeah. And so when your dad suggested it, it caught me off guard. I almost thought he was joking. And then I was like, I, I, even to this day, I guess I can't figure out if, if he knew and didn't care or if he didn't realize exactly what he was getting himself into. Um, I think was he just, wanted to see it. Yeah. See, I, 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 I would have never guessed that. I'm glad we went. It was a great movie. <laughs> I, I just remember like the whole time I'm like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> like this, it just caught me off guard. So, that was that movie experience. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just checking. It's not a super compelling story. It's just, it was something that I occasionally think about. I'm just checking the list of movies because we've definitely had this conversation already. I I know that we've never talked about your dad and I would have definitely brought that up. Well, we did. (laughs) (laughs) Almost that exact same conversation we've had on this this podcast before. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't look like we've done the Punisher yet, so. I don't think we've done it officially. I think it's just been mentioned. Yeah. But yeah, no, we, um, uh, the Punisher with Thomas Jane is yeah. really good. <laughs> I like yeah, it, the Netflix better. I think it still holds up. Oh, for sure. Um, dirty, have you seen Dirty Laundry? Yes. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's what, that's that's the whenever I think of the Punisher, that's what I think of, and I think the show it it, it has that same feel to it. The show right? where they're not the show, the Punisher. Yeah, yeah, no, I there's a I just oh, I want to talk about it. <laughs> I, wanna, I know you. I'm I'm I, I still know that there's some scene that you've discussed that is violent. That I'm oh yeah, to get to. I've brought that up already. Yeah, it's the most violent thing I've ever seen on a on a show. I think. I will say that there was a lot of like brutal violence in the first episode and then it's kind of toned down a little bit. Yeah, there's I, a reason. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's like the scene where he fights the, the guys at the construction site with the sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that was brutal. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I just don't want to spoil it. Um, no, I'll, I, I'm, we're going to get there. It's, it's not far off. Yeah. The uh, the movie though, the movie The Punisher. He at the time I thought it was super brutal, but now it's it's I mean it's it's violent for yeah. sure, but it's almost there's it's almost a bit campy. Yeah, a little bit. Not like a lot, you know, not like over the top or anything, yeah. but definitely, definitely a little bit. The um, uh, but it's enjoyable. Well. John Travolta being the villain kind of it ruins that movie. 
Well, John Travolta ruins everything. Yeah. And that's, I was going to say, that's really my only critique or my only uh, criticism is John Travolta. And, uh, like, uh, so the guy who played his, like, right hand man, Will Patton, is, uh-huh. is his name in real life. I think that guy's great. And I think he would have made a much better villain, like, if he was the main villain. Oh, the balding guy. Yes. Yeah. The, the guy from Armageddon. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that guy's great. Um, I think he, he, he can play a really good villain. Well, but, the problem is he can't grow his hair out like John Travolta. This is true, but I'm also pretty sure that that is not John Travolta's real hair. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure true. that movie was the first time I was like, he may be wearing a wig or he may even have hair plugs. And I'm pretty sure he did have hair plugs around this time. Yeah. Well, his hair looks awful. He's a crazy person. He's really crazy. Oh. Um, I don't know that there's a lot, of, and I think we've had this discussion before. There's not a lot of movies that I like with John Travolta, other than like Grease. Well, that's I mean Grease. I don't I don't think Grease is any good. The more I think about it, I, I don't either. I think it's at this point it's more of a. I watched this a, a million times as a kid, so mm-hmm. I just kind of like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's, I mean, it's dumb. It's not like a compelling movie, but it's, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, so the Punisher is, is about Thomas Jane is Frank Castle. And in this one, he's a cop, right? He's a, isn't he like an FBI agent? Is he? But so I like, believe he's FBI. He's some kind of special forces type thing. Yeah. So I think his story can either be military or law enforcement, and I think it's generally law enforcement. In this one, he is in law enforcement with a milit well with a military history. Does he? Okay. Yeah, they even show a picture of him with like uh, his squad or whatever in uh, Desert Storm. Gotcha. They talk about his his past. Yeah. And yeah. So so ahead. he goes undercover. And gets a bunch of guys from the mob arrested. And then retires yeah. and is out. And some gun deals. And is on the beach with his family. Like, they're on an island or something. And. Well, yeah, they're on Costa Rica. So you got, you got to take into effect that there's this gun deal going down and someone ends up dying or a couple of guys end up dying. But one of them is the son of the, the famous Howard Saint. Which is played by John Travolta, who I don't know what his actual official pro- the title is. Uh-huh. You know, he's he's a businessman. He's he's like a millionaire. I don't know what he does. Probably a bunch of stuff, but he definitely does illegal stuff in the background. Uh, and so his son ends up dying, and his wife basically says. If you want to make this up to me, you, I want, I want, I want this guy dead, Tom Jane, and his whole family. Yeah. So he's like, okay. And so they murder his whole family, and it's not just like immediate family; it's like anyone he's ever known. Yeah. So it's a retirement they're, they're, party for him, and so his dad's no, I think there. It's just like a family reunion, right? Uh, I think it was a retirement party. Like I think they're they left for his retirement, like to celebrate. Him not being undercover be. and like they're just all. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but they're all together. It's like thirty people all at this barbecue on in Costa Rica, right? And Howard Saints goons show up and they just mow down everybody. Everyone dies. Yeah, um, including his 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 parents or his. I think it's his father in law actually. Um, and then they kill his wife. They kill his son, who was like eight or something like yeah, that. They, they run him run, down in a car. Yeah, they run him over. Um, basically, they kill everyone. They they capture him. He's been shot like multiple times. They douse him in gasoline and then set him on fire. And he like blasts into the ocean, and and he's presumed dead. And they think that's that's the end of that. But that's not the end of that. That is not the end of that. He somehow survives. He is, he's rescued by a fisherman? mysterious fisherman who 
I felt like there could have been more to that guy's story because they definitely alluded to him ahead of time. But he spends an unknown amount of time, I think a year maybe, something like that, uh, recovering and, you know, being in hiding. What are the chances then, that fisherman was, uh, Rosio, <laughs> Rosio? What's Rosario Dawson? Yeah, Rosario Dawson. It was her. Yeah, it was just the night. That's how these all tie together. Yep. Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, so he recovers and then he makes his big comeback where he decides he's going to take, uh, you know, revenge against Howard Saint and his family. Uh, but he's not going to do it in one big push. He's going to systematically like dismantle everything this guy knows about his life and take down his company, take, you know, take out everything that he loves, whether that's his friend, his wife, his kids, his money, whatever it is. He takes, he, you know, he's going to work to take that all down. Um, once Howard Saint figures out that he's still alive and he's coming after him, he starts sending hitmen after him to, to kill him. Cause there's basically, he puts a hit out on him and each guy that he sends is like, is like fighting a bigger, like it's like a boss battle that you have to defeat to get to Howard Saint. And they're like progressively more and more difficult. But he kills everyone that is being sent his way. Um, yeah, I don't, if you have anything to add to that part. Yeah, no. So one of the more notable, uh, well, I guess there's kind of two. There's the Russian guy, the giant Russian guy. and Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash, the wrestler? Yeah, the wrestler. Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, that's him. He shows up, and he's just this giant, giant force. There's, that's... I think that's my favorite fight in the whole movie. That might be my favorite scene in the whole movie. Him versus the Russian, because he's just like so out, not outnumbered, what's uh, like outmatched by yeah. this guy, because he's just huge. And the Punisher's not like a big dude, you know, he's, he's, he's built or whatever, but he's not like this huge guy. So he is definitely struggling. And it's just like this brutal hand to hand combat where you're, Throwing each other through walls. Well, not even each other. Whatever you can get your hands. Yeah, every it would. It's him getting beat the whole time. Yeah, until he gets the pot of boiling water that he throws into his face, which was you said this came out in two thousand four. Yes, so I was fifteen. Um, Is that right? Fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I was much younger when we saw this. No, I know. I was definitely in high school. Yeah. But it was upsetting, the face burning. Like, when you're not expecting that to happen. Because it's, it's not even boiling. His face is melting off yeah. his skull. So, that's that's a really good scene. I really like it because... So, Frank has no friends. He's got no family. And he moves into this, like, old rundown apartment. And he's befriended by the other occupants of this place. Um, which is, like, Rebecca Romaine, Stamos... And Ben Foster and, uh, oh, what's the other guy's name? Ah, I can't remember his name. The big guy. Yeah. What is his name? His name is Bumpo in the, in the movie. He's a comedian though. He's, he's a real funny guy. He, he, John Bennett. John Bennett? John Bennett John is Panette? the, the girl who got murdered. Yeah. Uh, he's befriended by John Bennett Ramsey. <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty sure it's John Pinnett. Uh, um, I, I, it, I, I might be wrong. It's something like that. Let me see. What was his, uh, what was his name in it? Bumpo? Bumpo. Bumpo. It's either Bumpo or Bumpo. John Panette. You were right. Yeah. Not John Bonnet Ramsey. Not, not the ghost of John Bonnet Ramsey. Um, so he's befriended by these, uh, outcasts, essentially, mm-hmm. you know, and they, they take him under their wing, cause he's also his own version of an outcast. Um, and so they invite him to dinner, which he, you know, reluctantly agrees, cause he really has no time for these, uh, social gatherings. He's got one mission in mind, but he agrees, and he goes to dinner, and it's super awkward because everyone's real quiet. He doesn't really talk. And 
he decides he's going to leave. He's done. And he goes back to his apartment. And the do, uh, one of the guys comes back to freaking, I'm trying to remember it, the, the Ben Foster's name. He's got a weird name too, like Trapper Dan or something like that. <laughs> it's, it's. Well, they're playing that, that Italian song. The... Well, yeah. So that's after he says that he's not coming back. Yeah. Right. So hold on. I got to find this guy's name because it's really weird. He is Spacker Dave. That's what it is. <laughs> Spacker Dave. Yeah, that's I don't even understand that name, but whatever. Spacker Dave. So they go back. They're in the kitchen and they're cooking and they're they're trying to enjoy themselves. They they realize they failed at befriending uh, the Punisher, but they're still trying to make the best of it. And they got like the French music playing. I I know it's a famous song. I can't think of what it's called. And they're cooking and everything and they're dancing around. Well, at the same time is when the Russian shows up to kill the Punisher, knocks on the, just knocks on the door, you know, super casual. Punisher thinking it's one of the neighbors again, opens the door and is immediately attacked. So they're fighting. They're, he's being thrown through walls. He's just getting the snot beat out of him. At the same time, you see the others in the kitchen dancing and you could see the Punisher being attacked, you know, in his apartment. And like, it's funny because you see it going with, you know, with the music and everything. I thought it was. Mm. I, I think it's just a, like a great, well-directed scene. Every, everything about it, I like. Eventually, yeah. I mean, I, we're talking like grenades going off and like blasting holes in walls and everything. And no well, one's like even really hits, paying much hit, attention until he he finds yeah. a grenade and throws it at the Russian. And the Russian just hits it back at him like it was a softball pitch. And uh, he's got like a he's got like a broomstick and he just spats it right back at him. <laughs> You would definitely die. Uh, the bathtub would not oh, save sure. you. No. <laughs> Just the pressure um, wave would so liquefy Punisher's, your organs. Yeah, right? He's got all kinds of different like weapons hidden throughout his apartment. He's got hidden guns and stuff like that. Every time he gets, like, he manages to get to one of these weapons, the other dude just dismantles it. Like, he, uh, he, Doesn't he, he like pulls out a revolver. A, yeah. Go ahead. He pulls out a revolver and the Punisher's got like a, like a hand, like a, <coughs> like a dumbbell and he just smashes the, the barrel and like folds it. <laughs> it's just like, this dude is so strong. Um, so like whatever the Punisher's doing, it's not working and he's just getting, it's definitely like he's outmatched. Eventually the fight ends up in the kitchen. He gets thrown through the wall into this other apartment where they're in the kitchen cooking and he lands on the stove and he's like being choked out and he's like, reaching for anything that he could get his hands on and he grabs the boiling pot of whatever the guy was cooking and splashes it Pasta, in uh, the Russian's face. Yeah, something like that. Splashes it in his face and the guy turns away and he's like moaning and yelling and everything. He's in obvious pain and then when he turns back around, his face is just melting off of his skull and it's the craziest thing ever. <laughs> then he gets kicked down the stairs and his neck breaks. And he, he gets tackled down the, down the stairs, right? Stairs. Yeah. Yeah, he tackles him to, to end him, and the guy's neck breaks at the bottom. Could you imagine so being it that, wasn't even the that boiling group of face friends? That kills you. Could you imagine being that group uh, of no. friends trying to cook, and just two people bust through your wall and then fight to the death right in front of you? And you see a man's face melt <laughs> off his... It just melts. It's so bonkers. I remember at the time, that was probably like the most gruesome thing I'd ever seen. Yeah. Or, or, you know, definitely like top three or something like that. But, uh, yeah, so he, he ends up defeating the Russian. And that's actually the second guy he sends. The first guy, uh, they send is a musician, uh, named Harry Heck. Yes. And it, that one's, that one's more unsettling almost. Yeah. So the Punisher is sitting in a diner, which is uh the waitress is, you know, his neighbor. He's sitting there, this guy comes in, sits at a table, you know, a couple tables away with his guitar, and he's just like staring at the Punisher. And uh he has his he has his meal, and then uh the guy gets up and he walks over or no, sorry, he uh, he he gets out his guitar and he sings a song. Yeah, he's like, I wrote you like, a song. Well, yeah, so, so he sings this song and everyone's kind of just like looking at this guy because it's, again, it's just the neighbors in there. Everyone's wondering 
what's going on. So after he finishes the song, he gets up and he walks over and he, and he says, he says, I know you. you no, know, Punisher says, he's like, do I know you? He's like, no. He's like, but I know you. You're the boy from that paper. He's like, uh, he's like, you like that song? I wrote that for you. So I'm going to play it at your funeral. And then he just leaves. And I, I, that, that line always stuck with me for some reason. I don't know why. I always thought it was like, creepy right yeah i'm gonna play uh the i seen that theme song at your funeral just so you know i like it I- i'm completely down with that figure that so it's the most appropriate way to to celebrate your yeah. life so uh harry heck is his name he ends up leaving and then tom jane finishes the meal he leaves he gets in his car that he's kind of modified to be defensible it's got like a roll top uh screen type thing it's got Mm. it's got everything it's like a bulletproof uh so yeah yeah like what you would pull down uh in case like in a bank robbery and uh so he leaves and as he's sitting on a bridge or on a road like a bridge crossing type thing he sees this guy coming up in his uh rearview mirror and he's like full speed going at him and so Punisher takes off. The dude catches up, and they 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 wreck their vehicles or whatever. Punisher's car flips over. He ends up getting out, and uh, he's laying on the ground. The Harry Heck gets out of his vehicle and walks over, and he's got a gun, and uh, he's standing over him. Punisher pulls out like a switchblade, and the guy's like, "He's like, are you that dumb?" He's like, "Haven't you ever, you know, been told never bring a knife to a gunfight?" And Punisher hits the switch, and the knife just shoots out of the. The, the blade shoots out of the, the, the handle and jabs the dude right in the jugular and bleeds out. And then he takes his car. I always thought that was a cool little fight. Yeah. Yeah, the the song part I always found weird. Like It's weird for sure, but I think it's a catchy song. I like it. Is it? No, no, no. It never really stood out to me. It always just felt like a waste of time every time it came what on. What you thinking? Well, I think that guy is a real-life musician. I just mm-hmm. don't know who he is. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, but the other, the other thing that I liked, well, so there's two torture scenes. The one where Thomas Jane tortures Ugh. that one guy with a popsicle, which is, is super funny. He, uh, it's, it's great cinematic yeah. uh, visuals. <laughs> He's like, you know, the thing about a blowtorch is it's so hot. Your body doesn't know how to register it. And so at first it it's going to feel really cold. Then you'll start smelling burning meat. And then, so he, he turns on the blowtorch, jabs he's a popsicle. He's got this guy hanging upside down in his apartment with no shirt on. Yeah. And he's doing all this stuff behind him and he's, he's blowtorching a, like a piece of meat. And then he's jabbing the guy in the back with the, with the popsicle. And the guy, unknowing, believing the Punisher, obviously, because he's terrified of him, thinks that he's being blowtorched in the back. Yeah. And he's like, freaking out and he's struggling eventually he tells the punisher everything that he needs to know which is like his daily routine for everything yeah and does he continue to help the punisher is that was that his only yeah he does he does continue to help the punisher so um basically what he does is he tells him of his what his daily routine looks like and about his wife and his friend um I, and I can't remember his name in the in the movie, but it's the Will Patton character, uh, Quentin Glass. Yeah. That's his name. And so the Punisher uses all this information to really hit Howard where it hurts, right? Because he he wanted to he didn't want to just go and kill him. He wanted to make this guy suffer. So without being super detailed, he sets up his friend. To make it look like he's having an affair with his wife. So Howard kills his wife because he's like super jealous. And then he kills his best friend. Uh, and then after all that's done, um, there's the, the big confrontation where the Punisher goes to Howard's, uh, building where he's got like all his hitmen and bodyguards and everything. Punisher's able to take out everyone. He kills Howard's other son and when he finally is, there's the final standoff between the two. He's, he's got him, you know, pretty beat down because he was in an explosion. He ties him to a vehicle and basically tells him, Hey, you know, this is why I'm doing all this. And I made you kill your friend. I made you kill your wife. 
I killed your other son, and now I'm going to kill you. And then basically sets off this car, which goes into an explosion, which sets off a bunch of cars, explosions, which makes the, the logo of the Punisher. Yeah. Everything is good up until the logo. Yeah, that, that was corny. Yeah. Like, like I said, it's, that's campy. How long with, say you got 10 people to help you, how long would it take you and nine other, or 10 other people to set all of that up? Yeah. It's so long. Hours. (laughs) Without being seen, for one. Yeah. And then like, who knows how long it takes, and then half those cars, like, those people left, right? So he sets this off, and doesn't even look like this skull anymore, it's just like random car fires. You have to just hope no one leaves for the day. <laughs> it's the same with um, the Dark Knight Returns. Oh no, the Dark Knight Rises when Batman sets the bridge on fire. Yes, and yeah, like exactly. that would take so long. That's not something that's just simple that you can set up. Like, but here's the thing: who is seeing it? No one is seeing this. <laughs> that's true too. You're not like leaving like this calling card behind or like oh man this was the punisher you're not instilling fear in anyone's hearts fire crews are going to show up they're going to put all these fires out no one's gonna be like hey i wonder if we went up from really high and looked at this if it looked like something (laughs) (coughs) so it was just a big waste of time it's corny it's it's probably the worst part of the movie to be honest the Um, uh, the other thing i thought was good but it was more disturbing was the torture scene of his uh uh, spacker dave yeah spacker dave where, that was awful. That was really upsetting. Yeah, because he's got all these piercings in his lips, in his eyebrow, in his ears, his nose, and they take a, the mob guys show up and are questioning him, like, "Hey, where's so, Thomas Jane?" And right, so they start they start asking him. They're not saying anything, and so then they start pulling him out one by one, and the guys. So yeah, Th- so this is yeah directly following the fight with the Russian. Now, although he won, he's still in really bad shape, right? So, uh, Rebecca Romaine is also some kind of nurse or something. I don't know. She's trying to heal him, uh, but then the people show up. So he's got this underground bunker type thing in his built into his apartment. They go down in there and are, you know, she's got to keep him quiet so they can't find him. At the same time, they grab Specker Dave and are questioning him and you know it gets to the point where he's like ripping out he he gets pliers and he's ripping out his piercings trying to get this guy to talk and he like refuses to give up that the punisher is right there you know under yeah. them he could easily end it and he doesn't do it um they 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 rip it out of his eyebrow his lip his nose i i don't remember how many but it's pretty brutal it's uh, it's it's hard to watch <laughs> Even now, it's it, even now it's like upsetting. But it once they leave, the the guy makes a comment like he's like, you know what? These guys are weak. Like if they knew where he was, they would have told us. Yeah. So I thought that was a good moment because they obviously did know where he was and didn't say anything. And they don't know this guy. You know they they just see him as one of themselves, as these outsiders, outcasts. So they defend him, and so. That that really sets up like the we are like one you know we're all in this together type mentality. Well, what does Ben Foster say when Thomas Jane finally comes back? He's like bleeding, okay. and uh, Bumper's like basically yeah. <laughs> Bumper? Is what, called? what is his name? It's not Bumper. I th- it's Bumpo. Bumpo or something. Bumpo. Bum- Bumpo? <laughs> I, I like how you're making fun of me for thinking it was Bumper instead of Bumpo. <laughs> At least bumper is a word. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so Punisher basically asks him why he did it. Uh, and I, I, I don't remember. I think he just basically says, like, because we're friends. Something along those lines, or you're one of us, or something like that. Yeah. Um, <coughs> yeah, so that's that scene, which is, like I said, pretty upsetting. Yeah. One of the best uh, death scenes, kill scenes, or the the most creative one, I think, is when he kills uh, yeah, the son. With the, oh, with the bomb? Yeah, with the bomb. He's like, you seem like a pretty fit guy. How long do you think you can hold five pounds out just straight arm 
out. <laughs> and it's like, right. So there's an explosion, right? And in, in that, uh, chaos, the sun gets trapped under something and he can't move. And his legs are jacked up. Yeah. Something like that. His upper body's free, but his legs are not and he can't get out. And Punisher comes across him and rigs it to where he's holding this grenade or this bomb that is triggered by pulling out like a wire. And he, he rigs the wire to, Pretty much the guy's got to hold his arm out as for as long as possible. And as soon as he lets his arm down, it's going to trigger the bomb and explode. And he holds it for a good while. But, I mean, for him to live, he's going to have to hold that thing forever because no one's coming <laughs> for him. Um, well, what, so, do you, yeah, that, what, what do you think the message of this movie is? Don't kill someone's family. Because they're gonna kill your family. Just, just revenge. I guess. Look, look. If you're Howard Saint, right? Your your son dies because he's involved in in gun dealing and drugs and everything. So yeah, like I know you're upset. That's your kid. But like he wasn't innocent. He wasn't like wrong place, wrong time. He died because he was doing something illegal and he was killed. Um. And he also pulled weapons on the cops, you know, like no one was supposed to die. That was the whole point of the the sting operation was no one was going to die. But this guy was not even supposed to be there and he pulled out a gun. So he got himself killed. You got to accept that as as a father. You can't. It's it's that's no one's fault but your own son. Now, obviously, he's he's a villain, so he's got a different mentality. But uh, the moral of the story is raise your kids better. <laughs> it's just a, a parenting guide. It's a, yes. Parenting guide. <clears throat> I don't know that there really is a moral to the story. I don't know that the Punisher has ever needed that other than he's a vigilante who serves out justice that the police won't. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or can't, you know, whatever it, it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, so he takes it upon himself, although it's illegal. It's, he's, he's a vigilante, just like Daredevil. You know, he's a little more extreme, cause Daredevil doesn't, like, kill everybody, but it's the same concept. Yeah. The, the police either won't do it, or can't do it, because they're legally tied, or because these are rich people, and they've got, you know, they've paid off the police force and the commissioner, who knows. So he does it himself, as he, he has to, justice has to be served, so if he's the one who has to do it, then he's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think... I, I think comics are hard because they don't really need a moral. They don't need a... Right. Like, it's just... Just telling the story of the Punisher is basically the point of the movie. Um, like, if you really boil it down, it's kind of about, like, your life doesn't end when others end kind of thing. Like... Because he he right. was he was kind of a dead person, so it was kind of bringing him back to life through his neighbors and finding purpose and stuff like that. But uh, it, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, re yeah, refinding a a purpose, and his purpose is to to be the Punisher to serve out that justice for for people that don't get justice to stab people through the jaw into their mouth. Oh, I love! I, I thought that was one of my favorite kills. <laughs> he he stabs the dude in the hand. And then he stabs him up, yeah, like so through the jaw, and the guy like opens his mouth, and you can see the blade. I always thought that was cool. Um, what there, would you there are change? Some real creative calls. What uh, would you John change? Travolta. Just take him out completely. I'd just replace him with someone else. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Take out I, the, I would, the actor. I would make John Travolta more, or make that character more sinister. Yeah, like the wife, like, the, like well, more the, of a kingpin. The wife really should have been the main villain. The wife should have, yeah, yeah, that's true. She she was evil. She's yeah, she was evil, and she's the one who wanted the whole family dead. Yeah, not just the pun. Like John Travolta probably would have been fine if they had just killed Tom Jane, but she wanted the whole family, everybody gone. So yeah, yeah I, I, I think should argue she's the real villain. I think make her the main bad guy for the Punisher. Like he doesn't know that that's who he needs to go after. But yeah. she's the, she's the, the head, right? She's the, she's the reason behind all of this. 
change John Travolta with a different actor, who who do you think would be a better actor to put in that role? <laughs> um, no, um, like I said, I, even the guy that they had playing Quentin, I think, is a good villain. yeah. But if I had to pick, if I were, but I like him as his role also. Yeah. So if I had to pick a another actor to be that person, um, Danny DeVito. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to think of who was no, I don't who was around back then, because you want someone who's like strong and scary, but is being pushed right. around by his wife. Yes. I don't even know if it's necessarily that he's pushed around. I think he will just do whatever she wants. Like that's well, that's what I'm saying. What he does, not that like oh he doesn't want to do this, but he, he's she's making him. He's just like oh my wife wishes this, then it's granted. You yeah, know, whatever she wants, I, I'll do it for her. But um, I, the point would be that she has the power in the relationship, even if right. she doesn't have to use it, she has it. Um, okay, so let's see. Another good choice, I guess. Ah, uh, mm, well, okay. I don't know. I was gonna say, um, oh, why can't I think of his name? I don't know. Maybe someone like, like Michael Keaton. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Michael Keaton. But he's now. in so many, <coughs> so many superhero movies. Yeah, Michael Keaton from Spider Man Homecoming would have been the perfect. Yeah, that that's that's what, what I was imagining. Well, I was thinking maybe like Michael Billy Keaton Bob Thornton. as Beetlejuice. <laughs> Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I could see Billy Bob Thornton, but there's something I. I he can't. The problem is he can't be charismatic. Not too charismatic. Yeah, not too charismatic. He's got to be enough to be believable as a successful millionaire. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't my, change it. That's a my ton. pick, Michael Keaton. I wouldn't change a ton. I would probably make it more violent. I'd probably. Well, if it was made today, it probably would be more violent. I think they were probably pushing the limits yeah. for 2004 for what they could get away with, you know. Yeah. Um, I'd probably cut out the, uh, your favorite scene, the g- country western part. I wasn't a fan of that. <laughs> Wait! Oh, the singer? Yeah. No, that's on my my the 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 Russian's my favorite. Oh no! I yeah, but but, yeah, but I no, do like a- that. I just because it changes the tone a little bit, like it makes it, it just gives it like an unsettling feel because you're like the whole it's a tense scene because you're like this guy's here to do something, and then he just leaves and he doesn't do anything, yeah. but then he comes back. I don't know. Maybe if you what if you just wiped out the song. Yeah, take out the song. And he was, and was just there in the diner, like watching him and not saying anything. And then he leaves, and then he comes back to kill him. Yeah, yeah, that would be better. The song is the biggest issue I have with it. Yeah, I. It's more than likely this is probably someone that knew someone and got himself a role, and like insisted on singing. Uh, I don't know about that. That seems you don't think so? no, not that, not like that. Let me see. What, who is that guy? Uh, I don't know what his name in real life is. Mark Colley. Mark. His name? Mark McCauley? Mark Colley. Like the Border Collie. He's in Nashville. He's in uh, the Pun. I mean, he's not in a lot of stuff. Yeah. I was trying to see if he was an actual musician. I, I thought I remember reading that oh, there somewhere. He is. Yeah, it says he's a country music singer. Yeah. But, um, I would change Travolta. That, his character, Mark Coley's character, Har- uh, what's his name? Har- Harvey Heck? Harry Heck. Harry Heck. That felt very much like, uh, Kill Bill. Like, it didn't feel, it felt more along those lines than. Yeah, I could see that. The rest of the tone. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, this, it's a good movie. I enjoy it. Not a ton I would change. There's, I think there's a few things that, that it could get changed to make it like really, really good, but. But I think I, I, I love Tom Jane as the Punisher. Yeah. Um, what do you think of, uh, John Berthal 
but I also think he does great. Um, so the, I mean, they're both great. It's I don't know if I could pick between the two. You have to pick. Uh, Tom Jane. Ooh. Yeah, I think. No, I don't know. <laughs> I think I, I, I think I, I, I like Tom I'm Jane picking, better too. But I don't know if that's if I like him as the Punisher better or just that Punisher storyline better. No. But I think I like the TV. I don't know. It's hard to tell. They're they're really different. You know. Yeah, they're very different. I don't. I I like John Berthal. Is that? Berthal. Yeah. That's Berthal. Right. Uh, I like him as a Punisher until he gets into that. I don't know what to call it a mad dog mode, you know, where he's like, mode? yeah, where he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's, it's, it's distracting more than anything. Like it's, I feel like the Punisher is more collected than, uh, that. Yeah, that's, yeah, he, is. well, the Tom Jane Punisher is. At least. Yeah, that's what I like Tom Jane's version better. I feel like John Bernthal looks more like the Punisher, like yeah, what you would like, think. I, I think, I think John Bernthal would put up a better fight against the Russian. Yeah, so he's mm-hmm. definitely bigger and stronger. Um, I don't know; they're just two different, two different kinds of Punishers. But I think they're both great. Yeah. Um, I was I was really bummed that they didn't end up doing the sequel for it because I loved it so much. Uh, I guess it just the the writing and the rewriting and the changing of the directors it just got out of hand and eventually just got shut down. Yeah. Um and then it turned into Punisher Warzone, which is basically a reboot. It's not even it's not connected. No, yeah, I've never seen it. I've I haven't either. I was too I was too loyal to Tom Jane. I was like, you know what, dude? <laughs> I was talking to him, I was like, I'm not gonna do that to you. In my eyes you're the Punisher. Um so I'm not even going to watch it. And then when the show came out, I called him like, hey, man, you're out of luck. I'm going to watch the show. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of the show so far? So far, I'm, I'm, I'm digging the show. What, so you said you, you just finished the seventh episode. Yes. So the, okay, so the episode ended. I thought and it was a great ending. So he, he figures out that it's the... I, I I I can't even think of names. The the dude that he beat up from like you know in the past, his commander. Oh whatever, yeah, the guy knocked his eye out. Yeah, he figured out that that's the guy who's been like coming after him. Yeah. He because he's 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 thinking he's gonna take out one guy, and he's like set up at this guy's house. And he's got the sniper like zeroed in, and the dude shows up, and he's he's kind of surprised, but he's like ready to take him out. The guy casually walks over to the window and he's like standing right in front of it, like looking out and he shoots and the bullet and he's got like super bulletproof glass because the bullet goes and it stopped like right where the dude's head is, you know? Yeah. Like he would have just blasted his head off and then that that's how the episode ends. It was pretty good. I liked it. I have a hard time. I don't want to spoil it for you, but I'm trying to remember... Okay, has he, has, you know the guy that he is holding yeah, up with? Really re- yes. Have, micro. Have they had their love scene yet? Uh, the first one, yes. I've heard that there's a really controversial second one. Uh huh. Not gotten there yet. Oh, okay. Um, what do you think of the, uh, I, I found it super fascinating, the idea of watching his wife have a crush on the Punisher. Uh, yeah, it's super weird. <laughs> um, super, super weird. And he just now revealed to the guy micro that he knows that he's got cameras. So I don't know. I'm, I, I'm surprised that he hasn't said anything to him. Like, Hey, can you not, you know? Cause like, I get that she thinks I'm dead, but I'm not, and I hope to one day be able to go back to her. Yeah. So can you not do this? Because, like, you're clearly way better than me. <laughs> so, like, just stop, please. <laughs> and I'm also watching everything that you do. Yeah, it's a... It's a, it's a fact. Raise my kids. The idea of it is so fascinating. Like, uh, there's so much conflict that can come from that. 
But uh, we'll we'll talk about it once you finish. I don't want to. Right. I don't want to ruin it for you. Yeah, it it shouldn't be too much longer. We're that's what we're watching these days. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that was the Defenders and the Punisher. If Correct. you enjoy our show, if you'd like to help us out, or if you hate our no one show, actually enjoys this show, and you want to make one of us suffer, you can go over to Patreon dot com slash I seen that. For a dollar you can vote for Taylor or I, and whoever has the least amount of votes at the end of the month has to pay the punishment. You also get all the episodes two weeks in advance. Which is super important. So you can have the edge on all your friends who also listen to the podcast. <laughs> like I know stuff that you don't know. Stuff that, like that. That's how I feel about the Punisher right now. Exactly. It's a great feeling, right? It's stressful. I just want to. I, I go back and forth between my desire to upset you and my desire to be a good person. If you spoil this show for me, <laughs> that will be the last time we ever talk. <laughs> that sounds. I've that's had, so much more incentive to spoil it. Okay, I will systematically take down your life, <laughs> Punisher style. You would take your own down, your own life down way before. You ever got to mine? Yeah, this is so true. <laughs> um, I've had too many good things ruined for me. I'm not about to let this happen. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you can you can vote for us over on Patreon. You can follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to us on YouTube. That is correct. And we just want to say thank you to our sponsors, Boss Play, because uh, they really help us out a ton. And uh, yeah, it's a real big help. They're super special in our hearts. Super, super special. 